Well, that is our top six. Fitted by Ito, she qualified last. She'll be out first. Natalia Grossman, ah, she was on form this afternoon. And Saki Kuchi down the bottom. Well, she was first out and she qualified in second place. Impressive stuff from her. Available for the league climbing finals this weekend. But let's just remind ourselves what we have ahead. This is Boulder number one. The route set is set medium difficulty on this one. They are expecting perhaps some tops after a couple of attempts. I mean, obviously they're expecting tops, but expecting a few attempts needed. Potentially a Boulder for Natalia, this one. Yes. We, it's hard to say that not every Boulder is going to be a Boulder for <laughs> Natalia, but definitely having a look at it, I think some of her strengths are really going to show here. So Natalia, of course, the uh, overall winner. She's on catch, unbeatable now. This would be her fifth gold medal if she can win here tonight. So Futaba Ito is waiting. She gets escorted to the mat with an umbrella. She'll be the first athlete out. And the first one to test the Boulder one. For not being able to turn around in finals, it is a mental thing that you have to learn with practice, with experience, or just be exceptionally talented. <laughs> So Futaba turns, you can see the clock on the bottom right of your screen. That ticks down from four minutes. That's all the time the athletes have to complete this boulder. That was the starting position we talked about, up to the crimp. And the next hold is a jug. However, getting to it is easier said than done. It's a deep, deep pocket and she does find it there without a problem. Now though, this is the more tricky part. Let's see what method she chooses to come through here. Now this high foot to me wasn't obvious when the root setters pointed it out. However, Futaba immediately reads it correctly. She did put it up there, but she actually decided to match. So now she has got sort of her hands turned around and has to match fingers in a bad pocket, which she did do, so she is through. Yeah, this boulder has potential. Now watch out for those dual texture surfaces. Her left foot is on a no-tex, as I've decided to call it. So it's a slippy surface. She managed to deal with it well. Into the Gastons. Oh, she's not gassing, sorry, into the side pull and up to the top. This could be a flash for Futaba Ito, and it is. What a start for her. Excellent. She'll be very happy with that. Very well-deserved flash. So a flash is when the climber climbs it first time. They simply look at it, work it out, and send it on the first time of asking. And it's the best score you can get. So it's a perfect start for Futaba Ito. Let's check out some replays from this. And yeah, swapped her beta, changed it around a little bit in the middle. Yep, yep, interesting. Looks like she wanted to do it a different way originally, but took time to think about it, reassess, and try something different, and it worked perfectly. You can see that crimp blocked by the yellow hold. It's just to make it a little bit difficult for the athletes, and you need to challenge these women. Into the side pull. And then we thought it might be a Gaston, but she didn't do that. Theoretically, against where where you're holding on, it's easier in Gaston, but she's more than talented enough to take it the more cycle method. So great job from Futaba Ito. So Hannah Moyle out next. Look, you were involved with Team Germany once upon a time. You know these coaches, you know these athletes. How will the coaches, how will Hannah Moyle be feeling in this moment, do you think? Uh, uh, this is so hard to say because obviously every athlete has their own views on how they approach a final. I've talked to athletes who think, I'm just going to go out and do what I can do. And I've talked to athletes who say, I'm always thinking of who I need to beat, how many attempts I have to get. So it's definitely a bit of a mix and it's a very interesting question to ask. Um, and then there's the side of how personal it is to them. Many might not want to talk about it, but for sure it'll be very interesting to see Hannah Moore's approach now that she's very suddenly been thrust onto this massive stage, how she is dealing with it. So she goes upside down and inverted for this move up to the crimp. And we thought, I thought that this could be a bit of a struggle to get to the jug, but Futaba absolutely cruised it. So it'd be interesting to see how Hannah deals with it. Oh, popping off that right hand, but saving it. Coming back to the block crimp as well. That is quite impressive. Now it'd be very interesting to see what method Hannah chooses through here, as she's quite well known for finding interesting things with her feet, finding a way of pulling on a hold you wouldn't expect. Oh, 
Well, that's the method the root setters thought she would use or the athletes would use through that sequence. It sounded so outrageous when they said it, but Hannah made it look good. Yeah, yeah, and she's still on. So she's going to find herself a flash as well. So up to the dish, into the side pull, bumps up into more of a Gaston side pull again. Top, and that is going to be a top as long as she can match it. And it is a match for Hannah Moyle. Another flash. And Hannah did what she needed to do. So look, it's all very well getting to that final hole, but you have to match it, don't you? Yeah, you have to match it. And there have been some famous moments in climbing history where athletes have failed to match the most famous by far. I do believe it's from Manu Cornu, who got one hand on the top hole and then riled up the crowd and then came up before getting the second hand on. So uh, I believe many, many athletes have learned from that experience. It's interesting you bring that up. We were actually chatting about exactly that during the semi-finals, that historic moment. So yeah, don't celebrate too early. So Hannah, drill the feet up high into the pockets, drop the right foot down, careful not to stand on that no textured surface, chalking up mid-root, chalk used to improve grip. And then this was the top. So popping out to the right hand. And then this is the match Dan was talking about. You have to control it at the top. And even if you do match it, it's the control that counts. If she wants to fall off immediately, well, that's up to the judges at that yeah. point. You never want to leave it down to the judges. Yeah, yeah, it is always, always a difficult time. And I've seen other athletes, two hands on a top hold and turn around to look at the judges. And then as they're deciding, okay, now it's time to drop off, they slipped off. And suddenly everyone's asking a bit of a question and it's really down to the judge what they feel the situation was at the time. So the umbrellas are out for Miho Nanaka, who enters the stage, turns and faces the wall. This is a boulder that she should feel fairly at home on, suit her style. Locks in that toe, heel toe hooking high and easily swinging through. Showing the power there. So which method is she going to use? She's got the toe hook in. It's the cross. And then drops into a heel, hooking that dish. High right foot and a big bump up. Also going for the Gastons. Now into the side pull, Miho Nanaka. One move away, snatched at it, got it. Sorts of feet, has a moment and tops out. Great save there from Miho Nanaka. That was amazing. She is shocked by that. <laughs> but very pleased that she did not lose that top. It's funny because sometimes athletes have a slip like that and they aren't particularly concerned because they know they've got it. That one I don't think she had. That one was hard to hold. The top hold is not a sinking jug. It is actually quite slopey. You need to have tension. Well, we won't reveal too much. We won't give it away for those who haven't watched, but uh, do go and watch the men's final. It's an exciting thing. So it's Shen So clutching her shoes close to her chest to try to keep them dry. She runs out onto the mat. And now, these athletes don't know what the other athletes have done. They're unaware of the scores, but Shea and So would have heard the crowd's cheer, and she'll be aware that they're getting through this boulder pretty quickly, so she'll know she'll have to climb as quick. Yeah, yeah, she definitely will be thinking that, and again, we're wondering, okay, what's on her mind? Is it the boulder? Is it the score? Is it the competitors? There's a lot to juggle. So Shea So picks up her towel, and that's something that we see quite a lot in competitions. Yeah, little towels, that's to scrub your feet before pulling on. So just making sure there's no extra dirt, grime, or debris on the shoes, because anything that gets in between the rubber and the hold is going to reduce your friction. And that could be the difference between you sticking or coming off. Sure, you remember Shen So bursting onto the climbing scene with her lead prowess. And she was, for a long time, really mainly focused on the lead comps, but this year, oh, she's done pretty much all of the boulder ring comps. Missed one of the salt legs. 14th in her last comp, didn't make finals, so she'll be enjoying her return to the big stage here. Oh, and the dual text hold. Yeah, manages to make that stick. So she's got a high left foot, right foot underneath, locked in with the toe hook. And taking a long time to rest in this position. This is perhaps her lead training coming through here a little bit. That comes through so much in her climbing style. Everything very slow and controlled. She grabs a hold and then she settles, she composes before going on for the next move. However, she has wound herself up into an interesting position here. She's worked it out. 
She has turned this two move boulder into five or six moves so far. <laughs> Good to see her start again, resting and chalking up, making sure that she gets this done. Look at this style, it's incredible. It is like watching a lead climb. She had a rope on, I thought she'd be up on the top of the wall. It's so, so different, but I find so, so interesting to watch as she just finds herself a tough. There we go, four out of four. Strong start to the women's competition here. So Shea and So, calm and collected out there, gets it done and <laughs> using the flip-flops to protect her shoes. Look at this, she made a big move and then straight away worked her way into this resting position, hanging off one arm. And keeping your arm straight like that, it looks powerful, but it's actually quite a restful position. Relatively restful, depending on how well your shoulders are trained. Obviously, you need to keep that scapular pulled down to keep the shoulder in a healthy position. And if that's weak, then you will really, really struggle. But some lead climbers have insane strength in this sort of scapular retraction and she can just rest and chalk up in that position. Very interesting from Shea. So anyone watching who wants to learn how to climb long boulders, that was pretty much it. Just find those places where you can shake out, chalk up, compose yourself. And you saw the method she chose, a lot of the holes were matched. So sometimes that's the plan. Sometimes she gets into the position and thinks, oh, I can actually try something different. And in that scenario, you have to do so much more thinking on your arms, so to say. It's not quite, quite as depressing as it looks. So this is the lady we all want to see climbing here tonight, Saki Kuchi. Part of Team Japan. And let's look at her stats for a sec, right? So, Brixen, last comp, 43rd. Seoul, South Korea, 38th. Myringin, 33rd. There's nothing this year that indicates that she could make a final and be doing as well as she is doing. Yeah, it what really, really was something interesting to watch today. So, yeah, a lot of questions. And we're going to hopefully find some answers now. But a strange semi-final was interesting to watch a lot of the bigger the heavy hitting athletes looked tired looked heavy but this athlete saki kikuchi looked absolutely on fire yeah so let's see what will happen will the pressure get to her she <laughs> is used to turning straight around and finding a boulder but she used to move over to the matted section and she now does do it just shows really she's just not used to this final position so this is going to be fascinating stuff. The clock is ticking. She's taking her time to remind herself of what she read during the observation period. Big swing up, and she is a bit shorter, but gets it done. Yeah, there was a discussion amongst the root setters, realizing that the height difference in the field was now very different with Saki Kikuchi involved. So matches the crimp. Interesting. That's new beta. Out to the left, big swing, but keeps it in. And now this reach. It's going to be hard. She's kicking off that volume to create the momentum with the swing. There we are. Wow, that was all strength. There was no feet involved. She looked so comfortable coming through there. Great job from her. Now she boosts up towards the hole and just sticks that with her fingertips. Into the Gaston. There is the cross through move to the side pull and the top's in sight. Pops up to it, and we see our first fall of the competition for Saki Kikuchi. Oh my goodness, that that was uh, that was a roller coaster in itself. The method she t chose through there was so so powerful. This crossing under from the right hand into that pocket, the pocket she goes for is so so bad. It was amazing how she could reel it in with no feet. She then brought the feet on and across. That was very very impressive. Yeah, she caught that top hold in a similar way she caught the hold two holds before, just with the very ends of her fingertips. Managed to hold it the first time, but that second time, no go for her. So she's got two minutes to get this boulder done, so half her time. And now, even if she was to top this boulder now, she will still sink to the bottom of the rankings because this is her second attempt, whereas everyone else did it the first go. Yeah, it's only going, counting back two semi-finals if athletes are on the exact same score. You can see the bar on the bottom left. That fills up halfway for a zone. It will go full all the way up for a top. So, let's see what she's got this time. Out with the right, and you can see it maybe took a bit of power out of her that first go. That was impressive to save, though. Very, very impressive. Matches again. Again, look at those fingertips just on the edge. 
just on the edge. You can see she's actually going to nearly full extension for a lot of these moves, if not all of them. And that is that is just a symptom of her morphology that she has to go to the full extension. She just gets the tips of her fingers on the holds, barely dragging it, and it's much harder to hold if you're holding by right at the tip rather than sinking your whole hand in. Now that save is outrageous. How she held that, I don't know. She's got that pocket, is not great, and it's upside down, so you're underclinging it with your fingers. Yeah, yeah, very, very impressive. And the crux, I think, there is actually managing to hold all those forces with the heel. With the pocket and the left toe, you can really push. And then somehow, her heel managed to counteract all that force so that she could go back and keep going up. That was the left hand to let go on the jug. But yes, it's a big stretch between these moves, but she's going again. Again, that drop down save with 35 seconds on the clock. She's going to have to motor here. Matches fingertips on that hold. And the big swing out better this time from her. Now let's see this method again. This pocket she is on in the left is so poor. She just casually rotates her whole body around and under it. She's got 15 seconds, at 10, and that will not be enough time. So our first athlete fails to get to the top of the first boulder. She will leave with just a zone. I think she forgot her stuff there. She's running back to get the stuff. Okay, so as is always the way with this competition, you can't presume things. We might have thought this boulder was super easy. Turns out there's a lot of physicality required in this one. Very, very physical, and you can see going all the way to the ends of her extension. So, so powerful to come through these movements. So, let's watch some replays of that. That was the zone. She came closest on her first attempt, had a hand on the finishing hold. Unfortunately, to drop it, and that was the fingertips we were chatting about. Less skin means less surface area, and more chance of popping off. So good job from her, but not enough for a top on that first boulder. All right, Saki Kaguchi's done, and Natalia Grossman comes out onto the stage. Can she get gold medal number five here this evening? So Natalia looks at the boulder. She's a lady who is expert at flashing climbs, doing it first time. And you'll notice that smile on her face, always present. She loves climbing and uses that smile just to hype herself up. Positive attitude as she goes upwards. So Natalia matching on that hold. Up to the There's the hang in the chalk up. So she hangs off again, similar style to Sheon So. That right foot on a dual tex. Really mixing it up here. Good with that right heel, though, to drive her body left into this poor pocket, just so that she could get under it and make it work. That was very impressive. Yeah, she was upside down there. Had it almost stood in her own hand to get through that move. So right foot twisted in the pocket, locking off again. This is Natalia's flash attempt. First go. Gets it, holds it for a sec. Will look to drop flag her feet. And that is a flash for Natalia Grossman. Was to be expected. So she finishes things off, puts on that protective cover, and she will jump to the top of the leaderboard because she qualified in first position for this. She's a lady who just loves being out there in front of the big stage. Yeah, making that big smile work. But it is also a psychological aspect as well. That having a smile on your face actually gives that positive mindset which is shown to produce better results in competitions. This was the end of the boulder. Left hand up to the dish. It's fairly straightforward from there, but that top is not as simple as she made it look. You can see adjusting her hands. Remember that slip that Miho did. She was almost going to bump the feet in, like Miho, but decided to flag backwards instead, drop yeah. the foot down. Lean right, get that center of gravity directly under the hold so that you do hang under it rather than pulling out from the wall. So Natalia's first boulder is done. Let's check out the results. And that is boulder number two in the background. So Natalia Grossman in first position. Sheon So second. Miho Nanaka, Anna Moyle, Futaba Ito, and then Saki Kikuchi not managing a top, but a zone for her, as you can see. Let's check out the next boulder once more. 
There it is, right in the center of our wall, so protect it as we said. And Danum, what's your thoughts on this? Well, it's going to be a tricky, tricky start with this triple dino it's described as. Both those holes on the lower side of that um, left volume are very, very poor. So you have to generate some momentum and pull off those to carry yourself up to this blue volume, this blue macro on the upper side of the left volume for attacking the zone. And then you've got another tricky coordination movement. Swing that foot out, get it on that yellow hold to keep you on the wall. So Futaba Ito enters the stage for boulder number two. Ducked under the umbrella as she came in, does her shoes up. And uh, so far, so protected. So we will get to see at least some of this climb. So Futaba Ito is in action now. Four minutes on the clock because it counts down. She has a look at this triple dyno. It'll be interesting to see if the conditions have affected this move because it is a little bit friction dependent. So here we go. She'll have to launch up to the right. Gets herself set. Straight away, slipping off with that hold. Big pop. You can see her look at her hand briefly. It's not, it's always, that's the first sign that there's an issue with friction on the athlete's calculations. So, fall from Futaba. This was the fall. So, had the left hand and then watch it just straight down. She had that well as well. Yeah, yeah. It's blocked down at the bottom just to make it a little bit more of an awkward position. No mistake this time from Futaba. But no feet either. Very, very powerful to hold that. Really just it's almost doing a one arm pull up on the left arm and then pushing against with the right arm to make the one arm pull up even harder. Yeah, she's calling for a brush there, but there was no brush to be had. So someone's coming out. I think the brushes are trying to get out of the rain as well. So this was it. Couldn't find a foot. Sent her down to the ground. The boulder is described as a triple dino, whereas Futaba right now is trying to break it out up into individual parts. Seems like she'd want to get a foot right up by her hand, which means she could lay back that first hold and potentially go straight up to the next blue hold on top, but very difficult method. Yeah, I think, as you can see, there's a little bit of moisture in the air, and I think that's causing a few problems with that left hand just slipping off it and there's only so much brushing and chalk that you can do the whole the, the boulder itself the wall isn't wet however it's just the amount of moisture hanging around out there yeah, yeah there's uh, there's different ways it can work sometimes when the rain comes and it doesn't hit the climb it, the humidity drops because that was the cloud getting the humidity out of the air but sometimes as it appears to be right now the rain is essentially bouncing off the ground vaporizing again and the humidity here is getting quite high so Futaba gets thrown a brush she'll take matters into her own hands and you can see there is a bit of a damp patch on her shoes there so we'll keep an eye on that so into this starting position, hasn't got this sequence worked. I mean, we expect it to be a triple dyno, but she's trying to stop on the hold. Do you think that's causing the problems with it as well? That is not the intended method. No, she got, she did a very good job on that first attempt. And potentially if she managed to get her foot up by her hand, she could be in a very good place. But we are seeing that uh, we're losing this progress in the next attempt. So it might be time soon to attempt something new. So she still tries to lock it off. So the idea was to flow through that move to the next one, but it's, it's actually quite difficult to see how that's even possible. And it's difficult when an athlete is doing a certain beta to work out what the other beta might be. Yeah, yeah. And it'll be very interesting to see what the other athletes are attempting on this boulder. Maybe they all, they did converse between themselves, so maybe they're all going to try the same thing. Or maybe we're going to see another method here. This was a boulder that the root setters were a little bit nervous about when they talked to us. Uh, they were sort of fingers crossed on this one because, yeah, it, they didn't quite know how the athletes would read it, work it out. 30 seconds on the clock for Futabarito, and she's not making progress at the moment, falling on the same move. Not finding the friction there. You can tell not looking so comfortable in the current situation with the heavens opening up above her. Those slow motion shots. Oh, hello, that was a bit better from Futaba. Yeah, those slow motion shots. I just, I can feel the skin staying on the hold. You know, it's one of those. I just, I, oh, it makes me go cold. 
<laughs> quite the script there, man. <laughs> but very, very accurate. Very accurate. Yeah, I think it sums it up nicely. <laughs> yeah, yeah, very much so. Hannah Moyle is in. She's still smiling, which is good. And she walks and then just ducks under that protective. <laughs> under. It's funny how moisture becomes it's such an enemy of the climbers, isn't it? It's just like... Oh, it is the absolute enemy. It's quite funny. Most professional climbers don't own a raincoat because uh, they have no intention of ever being out in the rain. It's a very good point, yeah. So, Hannah Moyle, still smiling, though. Shoes on for her. You see, 21. And that one silver medal in the middle of her profile. That's what she won a couple of weeks ago in Brixen in northern Italy. So, kicking the mat forward. That mat will be essential during this climb. And let's see now, will Hannah Moyle have read this boulder the same way as Futa by Ito and try to stop on that first hold? And it is, but she's made it work. She That's interesting. It work. And an athlete so talented at getting her feet up, so there she is, fine with the foot up. Well, she's smashed the intended beater there, <laughs> completely knocked it out of the park. Heel hooks. And then into the crimps, and both of us, I mean, we didn't like the look of these crimps, did we? No, they are not inviting crimps at all. So swinging around, holding herself. Anna Moyle now is looking at a second flash. Can she stick? Can she get the foot up? There and we she go. she is. Well, food about eat. <laughs> I mean, we thought it might be condition dependent. Perhaps not. Goodness, the German coach is very, very happy. Well, that is a good job from Hannah Moyle. Awesome from her. And she leaves the stage. Look at this then. Well, she did the same. I love this switch into the press to really keep driving to the right. That's the directional force you need to create on the hold that the left hand is on. And she dodged that, that middle hold entirely. Just didn't need it. Didn't need it whatsoever. We're going to get another slow-mo. Now, look at the difference between Futabat and Hannah. I mean, it looks on the face of it exactly the same. So uh, like, why can Hannah stick that and Futabat can't? Is it just a finger strength thing, a friction? I mean, I actually think most of it is friction. And depending on the genetics of how the skin is made up, it can vary vastly in climbing. Some climbers, a little bit of moisture and they can't touch anything. Other climbers actually require the moisture. We've heard stories of Adam Andre coming out with a little bowl of water. And even yesterday we saw Jakob Schubert <laughs> with a, a famous moment of trying to get some moisture on his fingers because he has very dry skin. And a lot of the world's best climbers, there is a bit of a correlation of that dry skin allowing you to essentially perform better because you get more of the forces that your body produces to stick to the rock. So, Hannah is done with a flash. Next up will be Miho Nanaka. Really interesting now. It's, I think uh, my perception of this boulder was entirely changed by that flash from Hannah Moyle. That is smart from her, actually. She wasn't going to be rushed through that sequence. And, and fair play to her, she has the time to use. So that's our leaderboard down the bottom. Hannah Moyle with that flash jumps to the top position. And of course, oh, see, that's more of the intended beta, but the issue is she's straight back towards the rain and immediately checked those feet. Oh, she, she had a reaction to that. She knows how big of a difference it will make if she gets one of her shoes wet. Now, something to consider here is one of the options available to the judges if the rain is too bad, if a section of the wall gets wet, is that they'll cancel one of the boulders. Now, that means that this boulder could be all important because let's say it becomes a three boulder competition suddenly then Hannah Moyle could be in a very strong position. Very, very strong position and quite surprising to see how happily she did this boulder. This could really shake up the whole results. It could, yeah. I remember, there are only three athletes into this, so three to go after Miho Nanaka. Mina take, Miho taking a long moment to look at this. She's the first one we've seen out who's actually using the beta that the root setters intended, which is a bit like that. A bit like that, very much so. But uh, now that you've seen it done another way, everyone thinks, well, why would you do it yes, the first way? It's so true. Yeah, I'm now thinking, that's ridiculous. Why is she jumping around? <laughs> Bouldering's a funny sport sometimes. <laughs> it really is. So, 
And that's what makes it great. And because of these athletes don't get to see it, we get to see something fresh every time they come out onto the mats. It's one of the joys of this sport. And Miho is getting closer. But so with the is the water. Well, apparently. so is the water. Now, look, a coordination dyno usually takes a few attempts, okay? It's kind of built into the structure of it. But because Hannah Moore did it statically, she's blown that completely out of the water. Yeah, she has really... The root setters actually are thinking a lot about how these boulders are going to be done and how that will affect the competition and the scoring. Hannah Moyle has just destroyed their plan. So, interesting stuff here in this women's final. Miho with a big jump up. I'm trying to, Every time she lifts up her feet, I'm trying to make sure they're not wet, <laughs> yeah. looking at her soles. Yeah, especially there are some very high stakes feet coming up later in the climb. So while she may get through this section without any necessary feet, the last part, that swing out to the yellow foothold, vital. So the brushes are in, doing a good job, keeping it clean. They do that to clean off the chalk, the sweat, the moisture that might be there. And it's amazing the difference that makes to a hold. She moves the chalk bag, and she's getting serious now. So Miho needs to find a solution here with a minute to go. And she's getting closer. There is the minute buzzer. A lot of looking at her hands, though. I think she is not quite dealing as well with the humidity that is rapidly coming up now. It's that bump with the right hand. She uses it as almost like an intermediate hold to bump up to the yellow. So Miho back on again, 40 seconds now. And you have to say, although she's getting there, it's incremental gains at this point. Exactly, exactly. And the question is, can she get enough gains before the timer runs out? Yeah, and it's rapidly running out. She's got less than 30 seconds now. Miho up again, but falling once more. 20 seconds on the clock she'll go. She'll want a zone out of this if she possibly can. 14, 12. We're nearing the end, and I think that's going to be it for Miho Nanaka. Is the <laughs> she didn't want to go, did she? Not, not pleased. So a bit of disappointment from me, Hope. Some frustration creeping in on those attempts. This climber famous for this more static method, so the money would be on her trying something similar to Hannah Moyle. But we will find out now as she gets to the boulder. Here is Shion So coming out. It's interesting to note because a lot of the athletes climb barefoot, but actually uh, Saki Kikuchi had socks on during her run, which is fairly unusual up at this level. So, Shion So rotating and a static method, but the left hand letting go again. Coming right off, just swinging a bit too far out from the wall. Looked like the issue there. That was it, watch that left hand. And then that Bang. hip's just coming a bit too far out. Yeah, so this was the moment. Oof. Everything always looks worse in slow motion, doesn't it? Campusing through now. I believe on that attempt, just a bit too destabilized and thought best to try to keep going. But I would imagine if she can stick that first section, she'll try to get a foot up by the starting handhold. So Shion So on her third attempt. That's the leaderboard so far. Hannah Moyle, the only one to top Boulder 2. So interesting when an athlete climbs something that might just be in their style, and it looks like a different climb when that happens. Completely different climb. It essentially was in some aspects, if you put Miho Nanaka's attempts right beside Hannah Moyle's attempts, it is a different climb if you choose different beta. So Shion So once more. Out or better this time, but it's just it's the weight is just pulling her backwards. Yeah, yeah, not really having the power in that right arm to keep pushing herself over to the right so that she can stick, create that directional force on the left hand hold. So maybe she will figure it out, she'll find a way to push more. The issue can be when she pushes, if you don't push only to the right and push herself out a bit, then you're going to come straight off the wall. So Shanso has less than two minutes now. Sitting in third position. Oh, that's better. Readjusted. But the second you bring that right hand up, you're, you're swinging again out from the wall. Exactly, exactly. 
seems like. I'm not sure if she's finding a stable position. Maybe that is her plan to do this first swing and then essentially keep campusing, keep the momentum up through rather than put a foot up. So Shen So starts again. Well, that was very different. That was a very different method. Would have been exceptionally powerful if she held it, but exceptionally cool. See the chalk stacking up on the hole. That's why the brushes are there, to get rid of that excess. A lot of chalk today, a very high chalk budget. <laughs> because we are climbing on plastic, we can just keep going at it while the rain's on. Not really the ideal thing to do on outdoor rock, particularly if you're on something like sandstone, which can break when it gets wet. She's done that method again. So it's a hand swap and going up at the right. Mm, yeah, really, it seems like she's her first idea hasn't worked, and now she's trying to come up with something else. So, 30 seconds to go for Shane So Again, maybe incremental gains. <laughs> That's a, it has to be a quick brush here. 20 seconds to go. You can see she's yeah, shoving them off she's out the just side. She's climbing on while they're there. Oh, but that's better. And she holds it. I, I just bringing that right hand through just immediately throws her off balance. Yep, that's exactly what's happening. And if she does make that work and wants to go up to the next move, she can. quickly, she didn't. Yeah, the unfortunate part is that we saw how close she came. One almost, one hand on the top. Very unfortunate. So she does have the ability to do these climbs. So she runs around. And those are the socks I was talking about. I mean, it is a thing wearing socks and climbing shoes. I'm not saying it isn't. It's just unusual to see it at pro athletes in the finals. It is quite unusual. It totally depends on how an athlete's understanding of how the shoe sticks to their foot. It's a very strange thing to say. I haven't actually talked about this. I don't know how much it comes up in other sports. But if you have a good connection through the rubber on your shoe and it doesn't move around from the skin on your foot, then that's fine, that's all you need. And if a sock is in between and you can still have that good connection, then you're fine. Absolutely. So, Saki Kikuchi will be up next. Turns to face the bowler, puts the mat down, and we continue. What method will she be using? Anna Moyles. Flash is just looking more and more impressive. <laughs> more and more impressive. It will be very exciting to see what our big named athlete tonight, Saki Grossman, will make of this boulder. Saki using the dynamic method to start with. Moving the towel forward. And taking that chalk bag off. I think it's, yeah. I mean, an athlete would take a chalk bag up to chalk up mid route. But sometimes it just gets in the way, especially with these more dynamic movements. Yeah, yeah, I do wonder what they're thinking behind. Maybe they're worried that they'll come off in an uncontrolled way and spill all of the chalk. Or maybe maybe it's just a little mental, like, okay, I need to do this. Change something. I'll take the chalk bag off. Yeah, I mean, personally, when it's swinging around, when you're doing a dynamic move, it just, it just unsettles me a bit. Perhaps <laughs> I don't know if it's the same for them. That's my feelings, anyway. So, Saki, all that method Shan So used with the right hand. Yeah, it was interesting. She did a pretty good job there, but rotated too far to the right. Again, though, if she does stick that, the next option, the only option, is to put your left foot right by your left hand, which would be very, very hard. Yeah, so is she climbing herself towards a dead end here? We'll see. I do see what you mean. Otherwise, yeah, she's not going to be able to generate it up otherwise. So, she asked for a brush and is obliged with two minutes, 23 to go. Second to last athlete out. As we near this halfway point in the women's competition. Up she goes with the right. I can tell you, if it is moving, it's, it's very small amounts. It just looks dramatic in that slow motion. We're getting a certain amount of stick on there, and uh, definitely it, she is considering whether or not to keep trying this method or try something else. 
Yeah, now's the time to change if she's going to do it. With a minute 38 left, that's time to try something new. And she is out with the left this time. And I mean, that did look a bit better. So, and now she's having to analyze. This is such a hard moment. She's all by herself out there. She hasn't got the coaches shouting advice at her. Yeah, this is a difficult situation to be in. I don't think anyone will have had a casual or relaxed time in their first finals, let alone deal with a storm at the same time. <laughs> it's true, I forget it's her first finals, yeah. But certainly this season, we'll look back through her results. But yeah, no, first senior finals. She has got silver medals in the Asian Youth Champs before, and a gold medal in the Asian Youth Champs for lead, not Boulder. So she's got less than a minute. Asking for a brush. Zone. <laughs> Just getting to zone on this boulder is such a problem. Such a problem. And I wonder what it will be like for the next athlete coming out if they're going to have trouble in the finish because Helen Moyle just made it look like not a problem. Now, the analytical brain of an Italian Grossman, I would imagine, will be sitting there thinking, well, everyone else is using all their times. And that lady over there, Hannah Moyle, came up pretty quick and got a massive cheer. So Natalia will have an understanding of what Hannah did. Be interesting to see what she does. Ten seconds left. Oh, that was better, but she's not going to have the time. Big pop off there, fortunately. Not able to make this first move work. So she sits back down, takes the shoes off. Natalia Grossman. The stakes right now are very, very high. It's essentially equal score on the first boulder. A dramatic change up on this boulder. <laughs> the potential to uh, have some boulders cancelled if the weather gets any worse. Is it going to be a fifth? I mean, look, if I put money on this before, then she's certainly the favourite. But Hannah Moyle, with that flash, is potentially changing that. <laughs> potentially changing that. And the next boulders coming up, I think, don't stand out in terms of either of those athletes' particular strengths. So we could have a very interesting battle coming up. Natalia is taking her time on this bottom sequence. She'll know, I think, that Hannah flashed it, and she'll be wanting to get this done. This is an important moment. And she's static it, holds it for a moment, brings the left foot up high. This is very dangerous stuff, right up. And now she starts to crank upwards towards the blue hole, and then she's on a little bit of a safety point here. Very impressive there. You could see her fight for that. I could almost imagine that Anna Moore was in her eyes, that she's not letting that athlete get ahead of her. So, Natalia, though, still needs to keep it together. That left crimp is awful. Right hand swinging for a sec. I thought she was off there. Matches, and then she should be able to get the top, but pops her feet. Juggling with the arms, brings the right foot up again. And I tell you what, that was a fight. But Natalia Grossman, I mean, that's what champions are made for, to push through those moments. Exactly. This is an athlete who came here to win. So, Natalia Grossman had to dig deep there, and you could see there was a different attitude to her then. There was a different attitude. Quite exciting to see this woman has more in her pocket. So, Natalia, what a fight on that boulder. There she's trying to, struggling, getting her knee in around her elbow. There's such a tight position, so much contortion you have to do in order to break the method that the root setters work so hard to force, which is... Uh, that may be one of my favourite parts of climbing, in the upsetting the setters. <laughs> Don't tell them that. So, Natalia gets it done, and I had to find something that was special. That was really a moment, and you can see that face. I mean, she had to bring her feet really high to make that static method work. Mm -hmm. Locks it in, immediately looks to the next hold. And you could tell, you pointed out, that she was taking quite a bit of time before pulling on, really assessing what she needed to do, making sure that Hannah <laughs> was not getting ahead of her in this competition. That right foot slip, though, that was a big slip she just had there on that top hold. 
Big right. slip, great strength. Very impressive. So, Natalia Grossman and Hannah Moore out in front at the moment. We will have a look at the results in a sec. So those are the results. Natalia Grossman leading the way. Hannah Moore in second, Sheon So third. Miho Nanaka, Futaba Ito and Saki Kikuchi. Natalia Grossman and Hannah Moyle way out in front. Way up. So, so impressed by the dedication of the fans right now. They are not leaving. They're not. So, Dana, look at this. What's your thoughts? What are the thoughts? So, interesting start. I think, though, this first tag foothold is relatively good. So, we see the people getting on. But the next one, all of a sudden, from here, looks almost the same. It's very much not the same. Much more slopey angle, much harder to stand on. So, they must move dynamically across to get these zone holds. And then the top, from the description we got from the setter, it's just jump up and grab it, which is uh, not some, it, it's just never really done in setting. There's always like, if you have a slopey hold, put some feet, arrange yourself, it's gonna be different. If you're just joining us, we are on Boulder 3. Welcome along. Futaba Ito. It's been called parkour, it's become, been called skate style. There's a lot of ways of looking at it, and it is uh, a big part of the evolution of competition climbing. And now everyone's wondering, where is this style going to go next? So let's watch Futaba here. She pushes off into a good start and then faces the direction she has to go. She's going to tiptoe across, finds the right foot, just the edges of the shoes in contact there, steadying herself, and then she'll set herself up for this jump. Out she goes, pops and down for her. Now look, this is something I always get a bit annoyed about, is people having a go at this style of boulder, saying, oh, it's not climbing, it's not outdoor bouldering, and I, it's not. This is competition climbing. It's different. Yeah. And personally, I have no issue with something like this. It very much by definition, this is the, the intended style that they're going for. And there is so much complexity to this style of climbing as there is to any other style of climbing. It's its own thing. It has as much right to be here, you could say. It is a big sort of conversation in the industry now that indoor climbing is really moving away from its roots of outdoor climbing. And I think that's okay. Yeah, I do too. But I mean, however you feel about it, you have to appreciate the athleticism of something like this and the ability to have so many different styles in your tool belt. You know, you have to be able to climb everything. Not just crushing on crimps on a vertical wall. <laughs> Things are a bit different. Yeah, very much so. So we get this wider range. We don't see some insane five millimeter crimp pulls, but we get to see a whole plethora of styles. Absolutely. So Futaba, this is the move for her. She comes out to the zone and there's not a screw on or anything on that, is there? I don't that think. first volume has nothing on it, that first black volume with the lightning bolt on it. But the next one does have a relatively good hold screwed onto it. So if she can get that hold with the right hand and not swing or barn door too far to the right, then be okay to set up for the last move. And this is one of those learned sequences as well. Once the athlete has it dialed down that muscle memory, it will get easier, but it's a race against the clock because you need to get it into your muscles as quickly as possible. Four minutes is not a lot of time to do that. Not a lot of time. Oh, that was a big slip. Not one slips like that. But it is a very poor hold. From the camera, it looks like almost the same hold twice, and she's standing without hands on the first hold, but actually that second hold is a lot, lot worse. Very difficult to stand on, never mind jump from. That was a big slip, wasn't it? No, I mean, maybe that starts to become a dampness issue, but I mean, I don't think we can keep saying that because the wall is dry. Let's go, let's go, and yes, there's humidity in the air, sure, but that was a big pop down for her. So it sets herself up once more. As the minute buzzer goes, she's not gonna have, look at that crimping the edge of the wall, that is allowed. That is allowed. I always love when athletes find a little thing like that. Better from food to bar now, working it out. Not a lot of time though. No, it's ticking down, less than a minute. So, Futabop has probably maybe two more goes in this. Right foot kicking up. 
30 seconds on the clock. Has to keep her face right against the wall to keep that body weight in. A lot of athletes will get scratches on their cheeks and chins from doing slab climbs like this. You can see the wind blowing, creating a very dramatic moment for us as we watch her dance her way through. Gets the toe sorted. She's not getting close, and she's only got 10 seconds. She will run, but she's not going to have enough time to get this done. Eight, seven. She's going to have to launch if she wants that zone. It's not going to be enough time for Futaba Ito. Interesting. Interesting. Funny how, without thinking, the body naturally went for something very different. I thought we were about to see a cartwheel across there. It would have been incredible. Cartwheel into a uh, toe catch on the volume on the zone. What do you think? <laughs> I'm not against it. I, I, I that might say, be a step too far on the I park or scale. I've seen crazier things, but actually maybe I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> so, food's about no go for her, no zone. So she's dropping down and away, and you have to see at this point, it's becoming a bit of a two-horse race between Natalia and uh, Hannah Moyle. <laughs> this is that move, obviously not a cartwheel, but uh, it's a, a dramatic last throw for her. Very much so. So Futaba leaves, Hannah Moyle wrapped up warm. Temperature has definitely dropped out there. So Hannah Moyle looks up at the ceiling. Every time she does that, she makes this little jump. There it is, through to the dry, safe area. And now, I, I've given up sort of predicting with Hannah Moyle. I've got no idea what she's about to do. Always adds uncertainty to a climb. So she turns, looks at the wall, rubbing her bottom of her foot. Let's try to get any moisture off. There's the towel, same thing. So pressing upwards to start off with, palming down. That's not the starting position yet. It will only be there. That's the starting position. So now she can continue climbing. So same method as before. Slowly does it to get into position for the jump. Holding her breath almost. And then we see that foot pop. Same thing as Futaba. That was a big foot pop. Very far across on the right there in that static position. Futaba had already gone for the dynamic move at that time. Whereas Hannah is testing how far can she go across on this foothold first. That was a good shot to show just how uh, unexpected that slip was. She had a pretty focused phase all the way down to the mat probably. It just happened so suddenly. It's actually one of the more dangerous parts in climbing. If, a, if your feet pop on a slab, there's very little control you have when you go to the ground. So that's her cheek pressed against the wall. And now better position from her, trusting that right foot, which is easier said than done. She's almost going statically into it. Almost, that was really, really impressive. Really impressive, planting that whole foot down, using as much surface area as possible to just stick on this exceptionally poor foothold. I wonder if she's gonna try that again and reach further. Yeah, it shows uh, how good she is with her feet. The fact she had a huge foot pop and then <laughs> fully trusted the foot the next go. Yeah, that is a very, very good skill in climbing. There it is. You can see how little of the rubber's on. Better from Hannah Moore, and she does stick the zone. That came from nowhere. So, second go in. Third go, sorry. And she's looking like she might top, but watch this final hold. It's a sloper, but no problem for her. That was amazing. That was so, so cool to see. <laughs> that jump across. She wasn't quite in control, but her reaction time as she snatched this hold and managed to stop herself on that move. So, so impressive. Hannah Moyle has left herself in a very powerful position now with only three attempts on this boulder. Great work from her. And it did seem to come out of nowhere because she was in the same position, went, and look at the coordination required. She's flying through the air. There's nothing on it. Hits that screw on which is blind and then holds the swing look how much focus that required look just flying very very impressed very good reaction times there to find that hold and a big exhale of breath as she nails the zone and that is the German coaches who understandably are impressed and this is a sloper we both thought was horrendous it, it looked pretty simple she looked like she wasn't having a problem on it 
very, very impressive. I was just speaking to the German coaches before. They were saying this is the best season Team Germany has had in eight years. That's what it meant to Hannah Moyle. Awesome from her. Miho Nanaka is on. And she was a bit frustrated by Boulder 2. Let's see if she's gone back to the ISO and just reassess things. So here she goes, almost ready. That clock will start counting down the moment she turns to face the wall. And here we go. Miho Nanaka is on. What can she do? Has another look at the sequences. She'll be aiming for that zone hold. Pushes up. Ooh, but a bobble. And that will count as an attempt to get into the first position. It's not what she wants, considering how this has just been done in three attempts. So pressing up this time. But she will have an awareness now of how slippery these holds are from that pop. Out she comes, pressing against the edge of the wall, palming. You can't use those screw holds on the wall itself. So interesting to see how close you need to have your face to the wall. That camera angle really does display how careful you have to be to not scratch your chin. Look at that crimp in the edge. So right foot out. We know how much rubber you need. And look at that good technique from her, similar to Hannah Moyle in terms of positioning. Here's the moment. Pops out and round, and that was a good first attempt. That was a very good first attempt. Well, second, at I section. should say. Second. At, at the section, it was a very good attempt. So she will be thinking she can definitely improve upon this once we get on top of the climb. That was the look I saw, that sort of like determination into a smile. That was so cool. So she presses in. That was a good try from her. Coming through. Was that a slip with the right as she moved? The right definitely didn't stick when she made connection with it. One of the few factors that sort of broke down in this highly coordinated movement. So she goes again. Look at that clock. Time flies on this boulder because of the slowness that she has to have moving through it. Eyes it up again. Composes herself. focused on this next move, waiting for her body to feel in balance before she starts going. Rocking back. Look at that patience. And, oh, that was cool. That was almost very good. Unfortunately, just swung out a little bit too far. If she manages, if she managed to stop that barn door happening, she would have been in a very good position to quite naturally bounce the feet and get across onto the better hole. But once there was that tiny bit of swing, that was past the point of no return, and she was coming off. So Miho, once again, the patience that she showed in that moment to wait while well, that clock, and she's facing the clock. It's on the right-hand side of her, so all the time she's watching it tick down. Better, closer. Very close now. And she'll know that this is the game on this kind of a boulder. You have to learn the sequences, you have to get it. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. You've got to be patient. It's the edge she's holding on to. So Miho got about as close as you can come to that zone. She might have time for two attempts, depending on how quickly she does this. Here she goes. Oh, but she's toppling off backwards she will have time though that's better to fall off there rather than set yourself for a long time and not feel comfortable better to fall off there but really not a lot of time now not what she wants because she knows she has the capacity to do this bowler 18 seconds coming up you can see the movements quite quick but we saw what happens if you get it wrong 10 seconds it's only going to be time for a zone surely and there's the pop and that's the end of Miho's boulder Oh, such a frustrating final for her. Such a frustrating final. Now, on the other hand, she's actually already locked in her second place prize for... Sharon So, she's up next. This boulder feels like we've been here for a long time. We've still got three athletes to go on this. My oh, goodness, yes, this is 
Such a slow fight. We have to help these athletes try to get through. And the mat is dry, and it has pretty much... I know it hasn't stopped raining at all. What am I talking about? It's still pouring. <laughs> I'm trying to be so positive with this rain. But. <laughs> so she nods to the judges to indicate she's ready. There's the buzzer. And that's a look at these first moves. Feet dried off as she starts to press upwards to begin things. There's the hold. Oh, and it's a first move fail for her. Different from Miho's fall, which was more of a pop. She just wasn't in the best of positions there. So Shion So is sitting in third at the moment with that one top, but no zone so far. So a zone would be useful for her here in terms of the score. Different start. She will start to go across now. Small movements with the feet, and that's really what you want to do. Little, little movements. If you move too far, it's going to be too much of an effort to bring those hips across to get the weight over oh, that yes. foot. So it's a oh, little yes. bit at a time. Here she goes, and this foot that we're getting used to now, a bit of the side of the foot, a bit of, but that's actually what has a very different position. She's more heel down towards the ground rather than flatter like Hannah was doing. Yeah. Oh, there it goes. It is very interesting to see how the athletes choose to use that foot. You're essentially deciding upon a compromise. The top, the sort of inner side, inner edge of the hold is more positive, so you're more likely to stick when you stand on it. However, in this type of movement, as you need to bring your hips directly across the wall and any centimeter further out they come, you will be lost. It's much better to actually stand at a point on the hole further away from the wall. So deeper down that hole, that means you've got more room to throw the hips into the wall as you come across. But obviously, none of the athletes are doing that, which indicates how bad this foothold is. So Shen Slow, with some classical music there in the background. Works her way across. Minute 46. Wow, that time goes fast. So this is where her foot popped before. And she takes less time this time. I think she, she was trying to chalk up when she slipped off before, so decided to go a little bit faster. Looks at that hold. And that. More progress to be made, but... As we saw with Hannah Moyle, almost all of a sudden, she was through. All right, she goes again. One minute, 12 on the clock. Works the feet across, small movements to maintain that balance. Left foot up. That's different. Okay, uses that as a nice to push away. Just get the weight over. Weight over, exactly. Heel down. What's going on here in this sequence? It seems like there's a little bit of a breakdown in confidence. You could see she only put her foot on for a second and then rather than committing, almost chose to come off. Took another look, does it pop? There's a slide there. So this, when you get these slips, if you put the foot on before and it's stuck and you're putting the foot back on and it's slipping, that is because you're not putting enough weight on it to get that rubber to stick and create friction. And that often is a factor of confidence. Look, this time though, she found it again, but really big point on slab climbing is the confidence. Yeah, in 10 seconds to go, she can't move that slow again. She is up, she's gonna be timed out here. Five, four, that is it for Shan So. She knows it, no zone again. <laughs> Low scoring round here, apart from Hannah Moyle, who's got three. It is actually an incredibly high stakes round. It's all about zone. Saki Kikuchi, let's see what she can do. Running across the mats. Almost dark here in the stadium. Last bit of sun just creeping through the clouds. The rain continuing to cascade down from the heavens. She turns in the spotlight, gets her shoes on. She's ready. 
Here we go. Four minutes on the clock, which goes quickly. Needs to figure out this fast here. That's her score at the moment, sitting way down in sick. She can get a top, though, with a competition this low scoring. That is going to bump her right up the standings. So it's high stakes here. Very, very high stakes round so far. And fixed by Ito. Didn't. So, yeah, a top would be important for her. Let's see. Pressing upwards. Good start from her. Oh, spinning back down, not finding that balancing point. Fortunately, because everyone flashed the first boulder, the top would need to be in less attempts for Saki Kikuchi to catch up with the other athletes. But if she does find one, then she's still in the running on the final boulder. So that's what's at stake for her. Foot down as we zoom in on the face. And it looked like she almost slipped and decided to go then. I'll have to see it from a different angle. Yeah, look, slipped and then thought, oh, well, I'm falling, Threw I might as well jump. Go. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> that good effort. You may as well try to get an attempt out of it. Absolutely. And I think she'll actually be given a bit of confidence from that because she came close and she didn't have a right foot on. So <laughs> imagine what she could do with the right foot. <laughs> imagine what she could do with the foot. Yeah, let's see. She needs to keep the weight through it. Again, into the corner. Feet tiptoeing. Good composure here. Getting the distance now. And still two minutes left. That's not a bad way to be. Although we have said that already on the other athletes attempting this climb. Yeah, very true. So can she learn from it? Can she adjust the little things? And of course, with a boulder like this, it, it often isn't the big movements that we see. There's tiny things going on go. with her body, go, the way she's standing, the way she's putting the weight through her feet. And that's what makes the difference in something like this. You have to look very closely. What makes the difference known as the micro beta. Someone does need to bring a book out on this. <laughs> that was closer, right hand. And a minute 40, she's got time. So the route setters, so the volunteers, make sure that the holds are clean. Up she comes. The hand was on it there. So there is, it's looking potentially good and she could throw herself back into the running with the top here. Look at that footwork, it's so interesting. She dropped her toe right down, almost toe scrubbed on the dual techs, on a no tech surface. Out she comes again, that bump is so, so I'm trying to doing it in the commentary box. I can't quite work out the sequence of it. It's, it's hard that that right and then to go into the uh, the side pull. It is a strange sequence of events and essentially matching up when you pull on this hold while also when you jump rightwards with your feet. Theoretically, you want to lay back on that hold, pull for a second, and then jump rightwards. But you already jumped into that position, so to create this almost pause moment very difficult there it is again further away that time so needs to keep it together for the last 30 seconds she's gonna be quick 22 i think she thought about a brush running big running start all the way in 15. if she can get the zone though we know that the top is just one simple pop away but she's only got 10 seconds to do it clocks in front of her out she goes it's not enough this time, so Saki still stays down in the bottom spot. Well, here she is. She needs to keep up with Hannah Moyle. And it's, it's so interesting that someone's putting the pressure on Natalia. Usually she's the one with that relentless uh, topping of the boulders. She's always there, she's consistent, and she's having to perform here tonight because Hannah is right on her heels. Hannah is right on her heels. There is a lot of pressure right now. And me as a coach, having observed the final boulder, knowing Hannah's climbing style, I have a feeling she's going to be doing quite well. So right now, all the stakes are on how well Natalia Grossman is gonna do on this climb. She's got three attempts to beat Anna. So Natalia, smile on her face. Turns to have a look. So at this point, we know what's required of this boulder and we know how quickly an athlete can fall. 
Huge concentration required. So she checks her shoes before she goes. Just extra drying it there to make sure. Really interesting to see. I know this is a learned movement, but how does one of the world's best athletes get through a learned movement? So Natalia pushes up. Awkward start this. Unfortunately, that bike foot is so high for her. Very difficult to pull up and right. And you can see she was afraid to bring that left foot off and lose an attempt. So making sure she's in the right position before she goes, wow, very careful and comes off the wall. Yeah, she struggled to find that screw on with the palm to drop back down to it, but it was too much of a drop into it. And you can see it just slipping. And there, look at that. Doesn't find the friction in it. Struggling, a little uncomfortable on the start here. Crimping you with height. This may be the answer why we saw Saki Kikuchi doing that running jump at the end. So Natalia pushing up, better from her. I don't think she'll have a problem or less of a problem next time. Look at that, that toe scrub down the bottom. Getting stood up. And then watch this right foot, as much rubber as possible. She goes for the more horizontal method. But drops back down. She'll want to readjust that left foot. That's why she's doing it. You can see bumping in again which means she can move her right foot further out. Oh, hello. Into the zone very quickly for Natalia. And now, <laughs> yeah, fair play. So one move to the top now. Don't drop it. She double matches it. And I think Natalia Grossman is showboating here on boulder number three. That was very, very impressive. So much control. She was able to lean so far to the right before committing to this jumping movement. And then not a problem for her to find the screwed on hold and stop the swing. That was really cool. <laughs> to get up, watch her get that zone with that look she gave to the audience. So she's back. Who said anything about pressure? She doesn't, it doesn't exist for that lady. That was the palm that she struggled with that first go. And look at this. Managing to pull with both hands. We've hardly seen anyone do that. The flick to keep her on the wall. And then look at this moment as she turns. <laughs> we might not see it. Let's see this again. Into the side pull. Kick with the feet to control that swing. And then, yeah, that there is There we are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That is a very cool moment in this competition. <laughs> So Natalia, and then a double popped up. That was what I meant by showboating. She just, I mean, there was no hesitation. She knew she was going to get that. Yeah, very confident. Throws the feet up and turns around for a little fist pump. So that was really cool to see. And look how bad that sloper is. I mean, it's, it's not the nicest top with no feet. Yeah, bit of a scary one to do after such a high stakes move right before. And speaking of scary, we are now walking up to our final boulder of the night where it actually might come down to nerves on the crux. So Natalia Grossman in the top spot, Hannah Moyle second, keeping the pressure on, and Shane So with the bronze medal position. And the reign of Innsbruck. And Miho Nanaka after that, Futsubar Ito and Saki Kikuchi finishing things off. Oh. So let's have a look at this next boulder. And Dan, I mean, <laughs> it's a tricky one to read this. This is the chimney move. The <laughs> the, I'm not sure why it's called finger power. <laughs> Maybe we will find out soon. But yes, the big thing standing out here is these two opposing yellow sections of volumes. And in order to get through that, the athlete is going to have to push against both sides, creating a bridge while keeping their body weight into the corner. And then you can see the top is not close, so it could be a little bit of a scary one to get up. So, Futaba Ito on her final climb, wrapped up warm in a down jacket this time. Darkness has descended, the temperatures have cooled, the rain we thought would put a dampener on things, and it hasn't. Big up to the volunteers and everyone working hard to keep the mats dry, the organizers, Judges, everyone doing a fantastic job here tonight. And food by Ito. Well, what can she do? Can she bump herself up the board? Immediately asking for a brush, just wanting to make sure everything's clean and ready. Yeah, one of these more feature-dependent boulders means that you need 
good friction. This slides the brush off. She gets going. Let's see what happens here. So she'll look to get the heel in. Does and then she'll smearing on that volume and that's that wrap around move with the right hand kicks her legs back good climbing so far she'll jam that toe into the flared crack gets the zone great from Futaba now this is a shoulder press doesn't need it forget the shoulder press she just use her feet instead right foot down and then she'll be looking to go towards that crimp that side pull on the edge, and then it quickly becomes all about the jump. But this position, awkward at the moment. Always strange in those positions when your leg is bent all the way down. It's hard to extend down. So left hand up to the side ball, bumps the left foot, upgrades the right into a better position. But look how far that jump is. It's a full body length up there. It's not close. And the big factor is how far out you come. So she springs, holds it. And that is the terrifying fall, frankly, from the top of the wall. Big shock from her Oof. and the crowd there. We're going to see a replay. I'm not sure if I want to. Yeah, I mean, this is the danger of a boulder like that. Oh, Aaron, look at the uh, the brush on the left face. So she held it, and the problem is it's a crimp. Legs kicking backwards with the obvious swing and face down to the mat. Landing on a toe, I think. Yeah, that... Oof. <laughs> We've got to watch six athletes do this. Oh my goodness, okay, well, it's an intense end to the evening here tonight. Keep the paramedics at bay. We definitely do have them, and the issue there actually, she jumped a little bit too high, jumped over the crimp. We're not able to create that tension before she's swinging too far out from the wall. She has to go and do it again now. Now look, it's easy to commit the first time you do something, okay? You think, I'm gonna jump for that, I'll nail it, I'll flash the boulder, walk away a hero. The problem is when you've fallen like that down, face first, and then you have to pick yourself up and do it again, it's gonna be in your head. It's going to be in your head. It is now a new skill set that the athletes need to utilize, not one that they're training very regularly. So we might be seeing a bit of a mix up here. All right, well, <laughs> if your hands aren't sweaty, if you're watching at home, they should be now because we know what's coming. So, Futaba jamming in that toe once more. High left foot, pressing upwards, and she needs to work away. Look at that deep breath, yeah. Determination. She does want to get a top here, and it could put her in a very healthy position of getting third place. So, foot on the back of the wall in this... Egyptian move. Chalking up with her fingers. Not quite comfortable yet, but good space to maneuver and keep trying different options. She needs to get to the side pull first of all. She's reaching it out, pushing with the right foot in order to get her left hand involved. Okay, so here we go. Wish her luck. Sets herself up. Crowd are hyping her up, and she needs every bit of hype she can get because this is it. She took that nasty fall. Can she nail it this time? This is the moment, and she can't. Spirals down. She's okay. Sits again like a cat landing. <laughs> that is a stressed coach right there. I'm stressed. Forget the coach. Oh, right. Again, just jumping a little bit too high, and she's already too swinging too far out before she can create that tension. And she's calling it a day on that, and kind of understandable, to be honest. She leaves. It is a slow boulder to climb. She used four minutes on just two attempts. Wow, well, okay. So next up, Hannah Moyle. So, so where's Hannah Moyle in this play she's... for right now? She is in second position as Natalia was able to get up the slab climate in one less attempt than Hannah. So that is making a difference. But right now, if Hannah can get up here quicker, in less attempts than Natalia Grossman, I'd say 
two attempts less than Natalia Grossman, she could find herself a win. All right, so Hannah going for gold here this evening on boulder number four. There is the score down on the left. So she's currently in second, Natalia at first. If she can do this quickly, she'll put all the pressure on Natalia. But Natalia won't know, of course, this is us <laughs> knowing the scores. Natalia will just know she's got to do it fast. So what? do it fast. And we are just introducing this big question into the system with the scary movement at the end. What are athletes going to make of it? So Hannah Moyle, again, with the right foot in the crack swings the feet out, presses upwards, and she needs to get as much height as possible on this to make the jump less far. So pressing outwards in that position, finds the screw on with the right foot. Really good use for flexibility here. Not so much trouble getting up to the last move. So her heart will be beating in this moment. Oh, nearly popped the right foot though. Bumps the left a little higher. That's the right foot, that's what she's going to be springing off unless she goes a bit higher. She sets herself, swings. Oh, thank goodness, a better fall. <laughs> Futebo taking, really trying to crimp down for so long in the swing and almost losing the touch on the hold at the maximum point. Hannah here, much more control in the swing. Heads coming up to her, hands coming up to her head, realizing that she could have done it on that attempt. Oh, she just got a brush in the face there. Obviously not ideal. The uh, brush apologizing, but yeah, a bit of an accident there. So Hannah will have to put that to one side, unfortunate. There it was. Ah, oh. and you can see it immediately, obviously, a complete mistake. So Hannah will reset. She does reset, just faces the wall. <laughs> Halfway smiling. through the time. This could be the big attempt for her now. Yeah, true. It goes so fast, you're right. So gets the right foot in, swings out. Presses her way through. So much shoulder strength in this move. And she'll be safer with the right foot when she gets the screw on. There it is. And now she can just rest for a second and chalk up. That's the left foot <laughs> steering on the wall. It's a very liberal use of the term rest because yeah. the tension in her hips, her legs, her core right now very, very high, and as much when you say the word rest, it's a bit of a rest for your brain, and she's not getting that right now. Yeah, it's uncomfortable for her. So here we go again. She had a more controlled swing last time. Can she nail it? She does nail it. Hannah Moyle, all she needs to do is match, which she does, and that is the top for her with a minute to go. Four out of four for Hannah. She's done everything that she can possibly do. And that will leave her for sure up there in the medal positions. But will it be gold here tonight in Innsbruck? She now gets to go to the side of the stage and watch nervously. Although she has to wait for three more athletes before Natalia comes out. <laughs> Goodness, this is going to be a long competition, especially considering how slow you climb up through this boulder. We're going to be on the edge of our seats for quite a while. Yeah, the tension will be delayed to so Hannah. Fantastic from her. Use that first go as a bit of a range finder. Controlled the swing a little bit better than Futa by Ito. And the second time of asking, she committed, even though she got that bang from the root setter, she pulled it together. And you can see she faced the wall to pull herself back into the moment. And then this was the jump. She just... And this pop holds it all the way backwards, that left hand still engaged. Great swing, really needing to engage through the shoulders there to hold the tension. So Hannah Moyle's evening is done. She's now sitting on the side of the stage because the athletes are allowed to watch after they've completed the climbs. And it's going to be interesting for the next athletes, Say Cheon Seo and Miho Nanaka, as they very possibly could be fighting for third place now. All right, Miho Nanaka comes out. She will want to be avoiding a big fall here, but knowing her, she won't really care if she takes that swing down. Her body's 
She's sitting in fifth. She got that first top, but then nothing for all of her efforts. Is it only a fourth is possible for her? I might have miscalculated before. Dana will have a look at scores for us as we watch this action. So holding on to the volume, up to the screw on, foot jammed in the crack. And this will be her first zone in a while. Gets it. And that's bumped her straight up to third. So there's possibly a medal here. Pushing backwards. This position we, ooh, nearly pops off with the left. And you can see, yeah, you're right, when I said rest earlier, clearly not a rest. <laughs> Full tension required to hold her there. It is a rest on the arms, but not the rest. Yeah. So Miha might just want to get those feet a bit higher. She's left herself a big jump to go here. Prepares, sets up, and it's a fall down. She's all right on the mats. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's one of those moves, isn't it? Contemplating what just happened there. Yeah, it's a big moment for this athlete. So here was the set. Up she came. Similar to Hannah, kept that left hand engaged. Popping out quite early. You can see a big factor of this is that they are going quite above the hole. This move would be incredibly difficult if that hole was blocked. And she popped out quite early while she was still sort of generating the bigger part of that swing, which meant her body rotated more horizontally as she came down. So Miho will compose herself. I think she's probably only going to give this one more go. That's what all the athlete, athletes have been doing. It's just too much of a physical sequence to have multiple goes, and it takes too long. So you might as well rest your way through it. And we know how good she is at timing. There is the clock click ticking down towards the inevitable zero. A shadow on the wall framed against it. Let's see what she can do now. She's ready, I think. It is her versus Chayonseo right now. Whoever gets to the top is going to find third place. Here we go. Niho Nanaka comes up, matches. She knows these moves will find them easier to second go. Out to the zone, first of all, not jamming the right toe in the crack this time. Pushing up with the right foot and the left palm. We'll try to find that screw on. Still hasn't quite got it, but it's enough. Left foot on the left volume. Easily into the side pull, but now it's time to jump again as the minute mark ticks through. Upgrades, very high right foot. Very high means less jump up, more swing to the left. Up she comes and she does hold it. Oh, but she needs to match, drops the feet back down, tenses the body and makes the top. And that has done big things for her potential medal positioning. Quite oh. happy with that. Again, one of those athletes I know from experience, she just wants to get on top of the boulder in front of her sometimes. Really, really cool to see how happy she was with that top. Yeah, full determination for Miho Nanaka. So she gets it done and moves into third. Different sequence through that time. Just concentrated on the zone, didn't worry about the crack. Palming down on the right wall, pushing up. Good job from Miho Nanaka. It she is that good. choice. Are we swinging up or are we swinging left? And she decided that it was better to be swinging left rather than having a bigger jump upwards. That was the hole locked. She got that perfectly well. See how quickly the fingers activated and then all the tension is there. Whereas if you saw more of an open hand, the fingers dragging, then it's high risk coming off. So fist pumping in the air. So that was Miho's attempt. She so now comes onto the mat. And we have a big question in front of us. If Chen Seo can flash this boulder, she will be ahead of Miho Nanaka, I believe, even on a second attempt due to count back as she qualified higher, she will take that third place position from Miho Nanaka. Shianzo faces the audience, looks at the starting holds. 
We'll take a moment to remember. You can see the hand movement. She's looking at the uh, press. And now, 15 seconds gone. Only a couple of goes really needed on this boulder. She's down in fifth at the moment. Top might bump her up. Let's see. Big reach for her here, fully extended on that heel. Yeah, it's a long way. So she gets the left toe onto the wall, holds the swing up into the crack. But there's not a lot going on there. Heels it. Oh, and then misses that and guppy. Miss there. Is that going to affect everything because she has not got the zone on the first attempt? So there's Miho talking to Hannah Moyle about the moves. Chatting it through. I like the fact that these athletes get to see the final moments of the comp. So Miho Nanaka is guaranteed the bronze because of attempts. So Shianso does not know that, so she'll obviously keep on pushing. Right foot jammed in the crack, comes up into the zone, left foot up, matches as she pulls herself into this chimney-like feature. Rotates that right leg down and that's what she's working with, with the handholds, not a lot. Very interesting now to see what is she going to make of this last move. Climber famous for static movements, now about to do something very high, very scary. Yeah, this will be out of her comfort zone, and I haven't seen her do a jump like this before. Let's see if she can see, let's see what kind of a dino she is. And I didn't quite catch it. She was definitely low on it. Definitely low, not able to stick it. And it looks like she no longer has that third place position. No, Miho is guaranteed that third place now because of attempts. So bronze for Miho. There she is. Sixth place to bronze in one jump. And look, the commitment from her, I mean, she's wondering why the camera's on it, but the commitment from her with that little injury she was carrying into this final to do that, to get that, amazing, really amazing. So here we go again. One minute left. She's going to have to go a little quicker to set herself up. Right foot up. Just struggling to get this powerful move done. And drops down. Time is going to start to be a factor here. Time is a factor. Also, she's definitely looking tired. And while she may definitely have the energy to do this climb, doing a move like the last move we have here is so much more difficult mentally speaking when you're also tired so swings out matching the volume pops up with the right hand gets the toe in and 28 seconds to go she's gonna run out of time here and i think she might call it she does so she so that's a no-go which means we move to our final two athletes of the evening saki kuchi is up next from japan I'm not sure that the, uh, the MC can announce that, but he does. <laughs> Miho Nanaka will take the bronze. Saki Kikuchi, unfortunately, not going to be competing for the medal position, but the experience in these finals is so, so vital. There's <laughs> Miho realizing, I guess accepting that she has got third place. Happy enough with that. Shenzo exits towards the holding area for the athletes. Here she is, looking to get every bit of experience she can from this final. She'll be sucking it all in, enjoying the tension, the atmosphere, getting the experience. Prepares herself. There's the clock. Just has another look at it. It's amazing how the root setters can create these features on a flat surface of a wall. Suddenly it gets all very 3D. 
They're very 3D. Always interesting to see that third dimension really, really changes climbing. High heel to Saki as she comes up to the volumes. Around the edge of it, wrapping with the hands. You can see how she turned into those toe hooks. She's not one of the taller climbers, so had to utilize different method to get through there. Creating a bit of swing here. Interesting, she'll kick her really high. That's really good Peter through there. And then presses, and this is the shoulder that actually, we were told by the root setters, would be necessary for this. There it is, palming down into it. Um, into this very awkward place. Facing the wrong way at the moment, she'll need to turn. Again, one of the smaller athletes, she's actually more comfortable in this closed chimney position. She's not fighting against her own limbs to find some space and able to utilize a very different method to get up in there. A good work from her, but then suddenly you realize the distance on this jump, that's a long way. So she'll need to get the feet as high as possible. That is a massive jump for her. So she sets herself, and that wasn't bad. Great that first attempt from her. A very good first attempt. Unfortunately, that left hand was gone quite early. That is not what we want. It would be incredibly hard to stick this swing on one arm. So you need that left hand holding on. And here is that alternative method, which was so, so interesting to see. Rather swinging the feet up first instead of trying to mantle through. It's just come from underneath all the way around, wrapping herself and then just pressing with her head into the wall. Oh, bit of a fight there. You could see that hold was memorized. She couldn't see where it was. She just threw the hand up and grabbed it. She was actually above the hole. We thought it'd be a long way, but she's easily into it. So has she worked out the distance? One minute 40 on the clock. Be time for one good attempt. Let's see what Saki Kikuchi can make of this. Yeah, she's resting well. She got there quite fast, so she has time. Left foot on, right heel. She had a little trouble with the sequence here, but better now. Wraps herself around the volume. Holds the swing. Gonna do the same thing. Flows around, gets the left feet up, right foot into the zone in this awkward move that we saw before. Head around, you don't want to slip in that position. Pushing now onto the screw on. <laughs> real... High risk left foot there, needs to make sure it doesn't roll too far away, but she is up and through. Yeah, same positioning, isn't it? Facing the wrong way and then turning to face the right direction, but popping that left foot. Works the rubber in, resting in a split, making sure she's not pumped because there was a lot of movements in that, a lot of physical moves. A lot of big body twisting, very core intensive movements. Up she comes, easily into the side pull. The clock though is 20 seconds on it. She needs to time this well. This will be her last go at this jump. Eyes it up, into it, and no, that left hand coming off the hole. Very difficult to hold it. Left hand away. It looked like she almost intended to bring the left hand and wanted to go up, maybe make a press with the left hand against the volume, but... So, there... She... So, out she comes to the zone, pressing through. Yeah, it could be a span issue. We've seen all the other athletes hold that lower hand. On this climb in particular, Saki Kikuchi had to do something different for nearly every movement. Interesting stuff from her. Good to see someone new, a fresh face here in the final. She gave us a great show. And that was the, the fall that Hannah Moy was grimacing on. She was all right. So one final athlete out. Crowd cheering as she comes towards the mats. She's dealt with everything that's been thrown at her tonight. Coordination moves, slabs, presses, and now it's time to grit your teeth and leap. Grit your teeth and leap. That should be the name of the climb. <laughs> 
So Natalia Gross has got four minutes, three attempts or less. What can she do? But very much come down to composure on that last move. Is that saying two attempts? <laughs> I'll zone in two. So we'll see. As we've seen all the other athletes only really having two good attempts on this climb. So what's she going to make of this last move? So Natalia Grossman needs to do this quickly. Up she comes into the heel. Straight into the triangular volume. I think it's two attempts now. So even less time. Out into the zone. Left pressing against the wall. Pushing upwards. Brings the right foot back, heel pressed into it. There's that right foot drilled in now. Natalia battling, similar position to Saki just now. Now the right foot's on the screw on, left out to the side pull. She takes a moment to rest in the non-rest. <laughs> Here we go, everyone. You're cheering at home, I hope you're screaming at the screen because this is a big moment. Up she goes, holds it, and this, if she can match, will be a gold medal, and she can. Natalia Grossman, was it ever really in doubt, takes her fifth of the season. She knows it. From Maringin onwards, that has been a clean sweep for the USA athlete Natalia Grossman. And Hannah Moyle fought her all the way for that silver medal. What a great display of composure. We kept asking, okay, we're getting a more mentally challenging movement here. How is she going to deal with it? She's dealt with every other challenge. No bother. What's this one gonna be like? And she smashed it out of the park. Fantastic from her. Great to see. She will leave the stage now to be congratulated by the fellow athletes. That was the move. She pressed herself through. Looked for the side ball, took a second to chalk up and take her time. We know she needed to do it quickly, but she put all doubts to a side by flashing that boulder. That was very, very exciting final climb. Absolute crescendo. Here we see this jump up. Look at the focus. Needs to get the exact right part. And then squeeze, pulling between the arms to kill that swing. And then it's not over. You need to match. <laughs> Natalia Crossman realized she's strong enough. She doesn't need feet on. She can just hang this edge with one arm and casually bring the other up to tap and match. What a competition. We didn't think, <laughs> I honestly thought the rain would call a stop to proceedings here, but somehow we kept going. And it ended up in a wonderful display of strength, agility, bravery up there on that final hold. We'll wait for the confirmation of the final results on screen, but we all know she's won this with a gold medal. Fantastic from Natalia. And Dannon, you're going to go down and interview her soon. I'm sure your questions are buzzing through your head, but what a comp, eh? What a comp. And what a beautiful set of boulders in this arena today. All of the points are going to the top. We see such great production, great climbs, and great climbers. So let's have a look at those final results. Natalia Grossman takes the win with four tops just beating Hannah Moyle, who takes her second silver medal of the season, and Miho Nanaka, sixth to bronze. Fantastic end to our comp. And what a way to finish the Boulder season. Three athletes on stage, our three medal winners. Natalia Grossman!
Congratulations. Well, the athletes have received their medals, and now it's... There we go, and our evening's awesome. entertainment is concluded. The athletes will leave the stage, go get some rest, and we'll do it. We'll start the process all again tomorrow for the uh, lead competition. Dan, and what a comp, hey? What a comp. Very, very exciting. And another time where the Making setting star has really upset the, the expected These outcome. Really interesting to see these climbers getting a lot of tops, and then suddenly a big drop in the